Hey there Bixby developers. In this video I'll be demonstrating how to convert your capsule from the legacy JavaScript runtime over to the new JavaScript runtime version 2. So why use JavaScript runtime version 2? It allows for the use of modern JavaScript syntax and replaces our legacy JavaScript runtime. This new version of JavaScript runtime is based on Google's V8 project so you can be confident that it is robust, secure, well maintained, and modern. We'll be going through these steps to migrate your capsule, but I'll also be live coding it as well. The quickest way to migrate your capsule is to simply right click your capsule and select migrate to latest JS runtime. This will add JS runtime version 2 to your capsule.bxp as well as migrating your code. So what exactly does migrating actually do? For example, it converts the old require syntax to newer import syntax. Here we can see that the var HTTP equals require HTTP is converted to import HTTP from HTTP. And it also does the same for the old module.exports. It converts it over to export default. For example, this old module.exports function is then converted to export default function. But also you'll notice that instead of passing in multiple input parameters, for example, name, type, price, and viv context, instead, it is simply just a single input object and now you can destructure whatever inputs that you actually need from it instead of you know having to pass in all of it as individual input parameters it is now a single one. So let's go ahead and start migrating our capsule over to JavaScript runtime version 2. Now this capsule This capsule is still using the legacy JavaScript runtime. It's a pretty simple capsule which just simply repeats you know what you want it to say. And right now it is still using the legacy JavaScript runtime version. So what we can do, the easiest way is to simply right click your capsule over here. And then here you can see migrate to latest JS runtime. Giving that a click will tell you what files it will modify. And then it will also create a backup in your Bixby hyphen workspace directory. And all I have to do at this point is to simply click migrate. And there we go. Now we can see that it's spitting out some errors in here. In particular, it is saying that this uh, get voice TTS as well as check voice, those are currently not found in libindex.js. But before we get to fixing this, we can see here that it's changed a bunch of stuff to import and it also has changed this to export default. We can also see here that it is automatically switched over to destructuring the sing single input object that we had. Because in the past, each individual one was an input parameter. Now it is a single input object, and now it is destructuring the variables from that. And if we go and look at the exports of that lib file that it's uh, uh, warning us about, we can see here that it is export default. And instead of the old module.exports equals whatever, now it's export default. So you may need to spot fix some minor migration issues. For example, here you can see that exporting objects while destructuring may require your attention as I showed you guys this line through an error. And this is because in order to fix this, all we have to do is to actually remove the default in this type of situation where you're exporting this and you want to destructure immediately when you're importing. So let's go ahead and fix this issue over in copycat.js. We go to the index or, you know, we go to this lib file that's exporting it. And what we can do is we can simply delete these. And once you delete this, it won't like this syntax here. So in order to just quickly fix that, you can just delete those. And now it will be much happier with that syntax. This capsule is now using JavaScript runtime version 2. Now I'm also going to do a little bit of live coding for a brand new JavaScript file because um, this way it may help you guys, you know, see the steps necessary. And I have another function, built-in functionality for this capsule, which checks the current models within your capsule. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually create the JavaScript for that. And then finally, you know, get it working up and running. So if we take a look at the capsule, we can see in the endpoints here that we actually do have a check models and we can see the model itself. We can see in the um, check models action, which is right here. And basically all that does is that it grabs all these different things and then shows you what models are currently in the capsule. So let's go ahead and actually um, start getting this to work. So we're going to uncomment these. And I also have a corresponding view file for the all models view, which matches the all models concept. And we can see here that it is missing the check models.js. So let's go ahead and finally create that right click code and create new action JavaScript. And we're going to name this as check models.js. 
And we can see that it's already converted over to the new format. Here we can see here it has inputs and then we can see that it has the args right here that's trying to destructure and finally return. So again, it is now all the input parameters are no longer individual input parameters and they are one single input parameter. Now looking at our endpoints for the check models, we can see what we passed into it. It is all this stuff. And we can go over here and instead you can destructure it just like this. And now we have successfully extracted these variables from this. Now, of course, <laughs> because my uh, one of the models I named was actually input, it is um, not liking that. So we can just kind of rename this to I or something instead. There we go. Yeah, but your by default it's input. But you know, since uh, I made this capsule before the JavaScript runtime version two, and uh, therefore the variable that's actually going in, which which copycat re repeats, is the input variable. This is a really simple action which just simply returns uh, all the different models that are currently in the capsule, and just like that, I I know this is extremely redundant. All we have to do is return i, right? But I just wanted to give you guys an example of how you destructure this uh, within your capsule. Now, of course, you can do um, whatever logic you need to mess with these things before you end up returning it to the capsule. Let's go ahead and try that out. This capsule is now using JavaScript runtime version 2. And I don't actually believe it has the training. It doesn't. So let's go ahead and add the training real quick. We're going to add that. And then the goal is going to be check models. Give that a quick save, let it compile, and then hopefully it will work. This capsule is now using JavaScript runtime version 2. Here are all the models stored in Bixby session state. And there you go. Now we can see that it is returning the various models within the capsule. We can see the voice Amy, we can see the input, we can see dialogue, text, and speech. So just like a little debugging functionality that I created um, for myself, you know, uh, when building this capsule. But the main takeaway here is how to handle the new JavaScript files. Now the syntax is export default. And again, it is a single input parameter named input by default. You know, I changed it to I obviously, which you need to destructure to grab the variables out of that single input variable that's coming in. So I did want to talk about the timeline for this. Should you migrate your capsule over from the legacy JavaScript runtime version to the new JavaScript runtime version two? And really, as of today, there is no immediate rush, but the legacy JavaScript runtime will be deprecated eventually. Now, if I had to guess, I'd say roughly a year or so. So like I said, no rush, but I mean, you know, it's still recommended to do it when you have the opportunity to. Improvements to the JavaScript runtime will only be for version two. These further improvements are definitely being worked on and will be coming. So I do recommend migrating your capsule over to JavaScript runtime version two so you can have access to these upcoming features. And of course, more information for this will be in a documentation link down below in the description. So be sure to check that out for more information or if you have any questions. And yeah, that's it.